What's up, everybody? It is Lauren Delisa Coleman with another episode of the Inside series for you for Filmio. We are still bringing you a number of great interviews all around the Sonoma International Film Festival, and I'm really glad to catch this next one. He's just kind of checked out of one hotel and moving on to another. He's just like uh, on on the move in general, um, and I've been stalking him via <laughs> email, and so I'm glad that he could take a few moments to be with us today. Um, I would love for you to welcome Jake Viramontes, who is a filmmaker and who has a film called The Series Project that is part of um, the whole Sonoma Film Festival massive um, lineup. So Jake, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for uh... found a quiet part of, of the hotel with like some fab like background there. I'm in the can... I'm in the bar right now. So they like let me sneak in here. I can't believe they're trusting me with and all this. And you know what? It's never a bad alcohol. idea to be in a bar alone. It's a shame that it's in the morning though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, 10 a.m. bar alone. That's a recipe. But as they always doctor. say, it's four o'clock somewhere. So whatever oh, you do once we stop hitting <laughs> once I hit record and we stop, that's up to you. This is terrible <laughs> advice. Anyway, Jake, thank you, yes, for, for taking the time. So could you um, give us a quick synopsis of the series project? Because I think it's just so wonderful. And yeah. um, dealing with food fits yeah. very well into the Sonoma um, Film Festival. Yeah. So yeah, go for it. So the series community project is an organization that I found through an initiative that I started called Sown. The idea behind Sown was that I was going to give away films to nonprofits totally free of charge. I was like, you know what? I I miss being a part of the nonprofit world. I miss being around people that are out there changing the world. I'd gone into commercial directing and done more branded content and worked with agencies and I still do, but I got into a level in my career where I just honestly miss being around like the grassroots vibe. And so I launched Sone and I got 75 submissions. And I was like, wow, okay. It was a two month window that I had the submissions open and series was one of them. And I live in Sebastopol. I live in West Sonoma County. And so I was sifting through it and I saw a series and I thought, this is such an obvious winner. <laughs> they, the story of series is that they provide fresh organic produce that they grow themselves for people in the community who are struggling with some sort of illness, some sort of physical illness. But the cool thing is that it's grown and created by high schoolers right. from the area. Right. And so I thought, wow, that's such a holistic process where it's growing the food, it's composting the food that they use. It's, it's a true cycle, soil to community, right? And so as I dug a little bit deeper after I had awarded them the free film, I talked to their director of communications and I was like, who are some stories in your program that might stand out? And so she gave me a short list and Hannah was one of the girls that stood out because when Hannah was nine, she actually, her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. So they found out about series. And so they applied for it and they were having food delivered to their house. And so Hannah had all these like vivid memories of running to the door, talking to the series people, getting really like, you know, emotionally connected to this group. And so when she turned 16 years old on the day that she got her driver's permit, she drove to the orientation for series and she said, I want to volunteer. I want to do for others what was done for me when I was eight years old. And I want to be that difference maker that that I remember when I was a little kid. Her mom is has now been cancer free uh, ever since. I think what is that eight years now? Um, nine years, I think uh, going on 10 and just such an incredible family and they opened up their house to me and they welcomed me in and I got to tell Hannah's story um, as a sort of guide through the series story, right? To make it more personal, make it more human, where it's not just about the organization because the work that they're doing is what it's about, but the change is on the human level. And so I wanted to highlight the human transformation and I thought Hannah told that story perfectly. So that was who I focused on and that's what the series film is. And I guess to bring it up to the present moment, I'm in Detroit right now because uh, this is the fourth free film that I'm doing. And it's for an organization called Empowerment Plan. And what they do is they design these coats that turn into sleeping bags for people that are experiencing homelessness here in Detroit. And they're handcrafted by people who are transitioning off of the street. And they have a 100% success rate of getting people off the street on their own two feet in the job force market and in their own housing and 
living their own lives with their own autonomy. So I just wrapped that shoot last night. And so that's why I'm here sitting in this Detroit beautiful bar. Jake, it, this is just so insane on so many different levels. I feel like somebody should be shooting a film about you shooting these films, right? Because you have all this like wonderful, I don't want to like say philanthropy, but it really should just be like regular human exchange going That's on it. that you're amplifying mm. um, through your expertise. And it just is like this wonderful, huge, crazy cycle. So and how the, many of these level- are you going to do? Well, so I started out, I did three last year. I did one in Los Angeles after I wrapped the Los Angeles project. Well, so before I shot the LA project, I reached out to Sony and I said, guys, you just came out with your brand new FX3 camera. I've got this initiative where I'm giving away films. You guys should give me a free camera. Go. We love it. And so she, so I, so I sent it out and I got a message back against all odds from the director of marketing for North America. And he said, send me your mailing address. And so they said, we love what you're doing. We're not just going to give you a free camera. We're going to open up our warehouse, any lenses you need, whatever gear you need. We want to support you. Okay. And I might so, have to get a tissue. I might have to like get, go off camera and get a tissue because this is just like so it's great. Just, it's just getting started. So then they, they sent me the gear and I went out and I shot this first film in LA and I sent it back to them. I said, guys, thanks for uh, giving me the gear. You made this film possible, right? Visually. And I got a message back saying, we love the film. We're showing it to the president of Sony this afternoon. And I thought, okay. No way, no way. And then the next day I get a message saying, it's being passed around our Tokyo office. Let me know if you're free to chat tomorrow. And I was like, you let me know when you're ready to chat. I'll be flexible. (laughs) Right. My schedule is your schedule in that case. I was like, but at the same time, I have a one-year-old. So let me know when you guys want to and I'll schedule around it. So I get um, uh, the time sorted and I get on the call and they go, look, we love what this is. We love what your mission's about. You've inspired our organization to create a campaign called Create Action. We're giving away 10 films to 10 nonprofits around the United States, along with $50,000 in cash and $50,000 in gear to each nonprofit. And we want you to direct all 10 of those. Now, wait, when was this exactly? This was like six or seven months ago. I've now shot no joke. You've inspired like a multinational corporation. Now I made a video called how I uh, generate or what did I call it? How I made a million dollars in six months. And it's kind of a tongue in cheek title. But the idea is that anybody can inspire. If you use your tools and you use them where they aren't self-serving and you point your focus outward and you look at how, you know, like this is my story, but it's not about me. How can I do something for someone else? That's true. Completely true. And, so, and it, wait, and it just generates to go back a quick minute. You have all this equipment, et cetera. But what about your team? It's just me. So you're you doing everything. So I sound, everything. lights, sound, editing, lights, editing, you're like producing, a one man studio. directing, color correction, sound design, like you name it. That's me. So I literally am by myself. My bags are right here. My cameras in my backpack. I don't check any bags. I carry everything with me. Um, and I, and I go in and I think that's part of the secret recipe of what I do is that people don't feel uncomfortable because it's just me. I'm like, guys, I'm sorry if you're expecting a big pomp and circumstance. It's just me. Well, I thought it'd be at least three, like maybe somebody, if you were outside and okay, wait, what if you're outside and you have like a boom mic situation, you can't be like holding that up and the camera at the same time. Right. I just use an onboard shotgun microphone. That's it. You are really like out here, like like the gorilla, like <laughs> filmmaker savior. I love this. I'm so glad I hunted you down because I, I was interested in this, but I didn't know there was all this backstory. The so gorilla let's talk savior. A little bit about time frame. <laughs> do you um, do you set aside since you, you know you're you're doing your quote unquote you know day job and these films at the same time? Do you set up like specific, like I don't know frameworks that this can only be shot like in, it has to be done in five days and I have two to, to edit and I have like another to color correct or do you really just go like organically where it takes it's you it's I'm or, curious it's organic. about how you kind of balance all of this because so many people are like I don't have enough time and yeah, you're yeah. doing this right so yeah, yeah. what is your secret well the secret is I started as an editor when I was 15 so I got really into editing arguably that's the most time consuming part 
And that's the thing that I, I feel I've honed in the most finely. Um, I like to think that I'm very proficient uh, at all stages of the process, but editing is really where I find that I have excelled and it's hard for me to pass my content onto a different editor because I, I feel it sounds weird talking about it like this, but I'm also being honest in the fact that I think that I've been given a skill set in editing that is rare and different. And so I'm able to move quickly in post-production mm. and uh, without sacrificing quality. Exactly. And so, so I spend two days typically in the city with the nonprofit filming with them. I'm very diligent in pre-production with how we schedule it out. I build the narrative in my head and pre-production with them over Zoom calls. And I go, great, let's start in the morning at this time. We'll do two interviews here. Then we'll move to the production floor here. I'll go home with you and we'll play with your kids for three hours here. We'll do a vignette with you putting them to bed here. I'll go home. I'll download the footage. We'll wake up. We'll do a sunrise shot of you coming in and getting your day going. I, I plan it all out very diligently. So that way, when you watch it, it feels like I spent a week with the organization. Right. Utilizing Looking at little. Would never know. Like, like the never know. Part. Yeah. So like utilizing little tricks, like bring a spare, you know, change of clothes. So that way it looks like we shot on a different day, little things like that. Right. And so I spend, uh, you know, typically two days shooting the project. And I usually spend about two days cutting the project and Nine times out of 10, the nonprofit has like wording changes on title cards and little tiny notes because I really give them what I consider a final cut right out of the gates. I'm not a believer in rough cuts. I'm a believer in give them what you think is perfect and let them respond to it um, because I have a vision of what I think it, the best thing is and I'm not going to give them something less. So that's sort of the rhythm of the schedule. So right. So to round out the question that you asked before, because I want to finish that thought, is how are how is this evolving? Is that I did three films last year, LA, that generated the Sony thing. Now Sony's paying me to do all 10 of these nonprofit films. So that's how I'm making a, a living, essentially, along with other projects. But now I'm also able to give back to these nonprofits. So right now I'm going to get off this call and drive to Grand Rapids and do a Sony nonprofit film. Um, and then... Uh, I did my third film in Arusha, Tanzania on a girl's home where they had built a girl's home for these orphan girls coming off the street. They had a skate park there. They had an organic farm and a school. So right now I am in the middle of fundraising with them $300,000 to try and build a school on their property for these girls. So I did a huge fundraising two Fridays ago, and I'm in the process of trying to get this to as many superintendents and school districts as possible to try and raise this money because I want to look back in five, 10 years and say, filmmaking is not just a nice art form. It's a, it's a tool to create actionable change where we can look back and say, we built a water well in Paraguay, which we've already done. We built a school in Tanzania, right? We were able to fundraise so that way we could, you know, make the Los Angeles organization a community partner for Sony and they got a hundred thousand dollars in grants and cash. Like, we can look back and point to tangibles and say, storytelling created this, filmmaking right. created this. It's not just a nice to have, it's a need to have. I really love this. And as I've been doing different interviews with filmmakers, I am just so inspired by those who are using the craft for this nonprofit like kind of scenario. I think we've seen this before, but I feel like it's becoming a massive trend now. And it's exciting because there's just a different approach and a different mindset that the filmmakers bring to the space like you do, right? And yeah. and I love the like, you know, we're taking no prisoners here. This is very organized and we're just going to bang this out. Not like, yeah. oh, I, you know, it took me like 5,000 years or whatever. No, no. because they're, the need is urgent, right? It's yes. not like you're just, you know, filming some love story, which is nice to watch as well. Sure. Don't get me wrong. But if you're trying to really amplify a need that's happening it's like it was already happening before you showed up. So really, there's no time. If we don't do so this, loving this, if loving we don't, it. if we don't do this, these specific kids will not have a place to go to school, right? right. Like, right. it's it's not hypothetical, right? <laughs> so now, how did the Sonoma Film Festival scenario come up? Since you said that you lived in the area, did yeah. you 
submit it? Did they come I submitted to you it. or what? I okay. submitted it. Yeah. So I, I thought, you know what, this would be a fun way to continue the conversation on a community level because I want people to know about series. I want them to get involved with series. What I'm doing is intended to amplify the voice of the nonprofit. So I was like, this at the very least will get their name and their story in front of more people. But at the same time, it's a great way to connect the mission of what I'm up to with storytelling and with my community through a film festival. And so I'm bummed that I'm working this week because I'd love to be in person at the festival, kind of meeting other storytellers from my community. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be there on Saturday to oh, that's kind of- good. I'll be a part of the party at the end and I'll be a part of one of my screenings. And I just want to, you know, you look at the film that I made and it's not, we're not going to Cannes. We're not going to Sundance. It's a promotional for a nonprofit, but that's not, that shouldn't be a mark against it just because it's not this crazy artfully done, you know, like um, just cause it's not going to get a golden bear in cinematography doesn't mean that the story isn't as relevant or important or that it shouldn't be seen on a national stage or on a global stage. And I think that, you know, as a filmmaker, sometimes the struggle is like, well, is this, you know, is this as high caliber filmmaker as possible when I'm doing these run and gun documentaries? And it's like, maybe it's not about you and your craft. Maybe it's not about you and your lighting setup. Maybe it's not about you and your like $50,000 score that you put together. Maybe it's about someone else and you're just a conduit to shed a light on them. And if someone else sees it and some change happens because of it, then that's more important than if you get some medal or some trophy or some accolade that you can hang your hat on and say, look, mom and dad, all of my hard work's been worth it. I think you change your life and you go, I might die never knowing that it happened, but deep down somewhere in my soul, it'll resonate. This is just so super inspiring. I'm, I don't know, what are you gonna do next? Like there's so much, I mean, are you gonna build this out to a full on like, you yes. know, production company and then you have, I don't know, maybe 20 people working for you and then, you know, so, kind of just creating these films exponentially. When I realized that there was a appetite for this work, when filmmakers were saying, what can I do? How can I help? I got written up in the press Democrat. I got a huge influx of people saying, what can I do? I have a story coming out in the Sonoma magazine in the April, May edition. And I know people are going to reach out and say, what can we do? And so I was like, I'm going to open up an application window for filmmakers. Yeah. So I opened it up and I got dozens upon dozens of yeah. applications yeah. from filmmakers all over the world. My criteria was we're not just giving away fil free films because we have cameras at our disposal. We're giving away top tier films that happen to be for free. Commercial grade films that should cost you 50 to $100,000, that cost you $0. And so when I was assembling the team of filmmakers, quality was of the utmost importance mm -hmm. to me. And so mm -hmm. I, I now have four other filmmakers who this year I'm sending out on assignment all over the world along with myself. So that way we can amplify the amount of films that we're able to do. Oh my gosh, amplify the amount of good that we're able to so do. Exciting. So I'm building a team of renegade filmmakers that are willing and the calling card, I got to read this to you. And I know you have another meeting, but this will inspire you because I read this. Go for it, please. This, this moved me. Right. And so I'm sure it's going to move you or someone else. This was a, this was put into the, into a paper when the, uh, the captain of the endurance, which they were the first transpolar expedition, the first expedition to ever cross a polar ice cap, right? Guaranteed death. This, to find his crew, he put this into the paper. Men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return, doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. And so I thought, I want to channel that energy. It's not about you. This is not going to make you rich. This is not going to put you in the forefront. It is going to highlight someone else and your tools will be leveraged for something bigger than you. And you will be the pebble that you drop and the ripple will be great. But it won't be about the pebble. It'll be about the ripple. And so those are the kind of people that are coming in because I'm like, I don't want this to be about you because it's not about us it's about what we've created it's right. about 
It's about them. It's about the organizations. It's about the work that they're doing. And so th with that psychology in mind, I feel like the right crew is finding this. Right. And so, so like I'm, minds such as yours, right? It's just a exactly. matter of making it greater and bigger so that you can shoot even, even more films. And I do think, though, just to um, kind of playfully disagree with you, I do think that there is a a lot of richness within this you know it's just it might not be what we typically think of as you know kind of capital or revenue but i believe that this is part of a new definition of success that we're all creating for yeah. a new type of world right yes. and so it's just a matter of how are you actually defining you know success and Correct. so if you you will walk away with awards many will at the oscars yeah. coming up and there's nothing wrong with that but you know, just inspiring maybe those who are watching your film in AMC. And that's cool, too, because you never know what people go on to do after they've watched a film. But this is something that, you you know, is kind of a bit more tangible if you're a filmmaker. And yeah. um, you can really say that I'm helping people to be able to amplify a mission where they are giving of themselves. And I am, too. That has to create like a whole new quantum field, right? It's a, of, it's a, it's of a excitement, of success on a new level and just so much more in, in terms of achievement. It's it, And that's what I tell the filmmakers is like, even though it's not a financial return and you're not going to get rich because you do this project, you're getting paid nothing. There is a and I can testify to it because I've done three films now that I've completed and I've just shot the fourth is that there is a quantum field of goodness that surrounds you where you go and doors open and people allow you to sit in their bar and take meetings and <laughs> they see it behind your eyes. They hear it in your voice because you can't escape the good nature that you're surrounding yourself with and a rising tide lifts all boats. And so if you find yourself in the right water, you're going to find the tide at the right level. And so that is irreplaceable and that lasts so much longer than any accolade. And the accolades are great. And I hope that they come and I hope people recognize it. Sonoma is a great example. I put it in because it was local and I thought this would be fun. I'd love to go see other filmmakers and meet other people in my community. But it feels good to know that what you created is being recognized as something valuable. So I'm not blind to that fact. It's just that's not the motivating factor. Right, right. And I think, too, that you can speak more fearlessly and without any doubt when you, you aren't dealing with anything that's you. And, yes. and that's why you're able to connect so much more with people. There's, there's no kind of even minutia of like self-consciousness. It's just something that you see is, that is more than you that you just have to reach. Yeah. And that connects. We, we connect with each other when we're able to do that. And it, it's really an amazing force. Amazing. Yeah. I agree. I am so excited for you and about you and everything else. How can we keep in touch with all the adventures of Jake? I'm sure you're active across social media, not for yeah. yourself, but to promote these projects. And yeah. you probably have a site for the company. Give us yeah. all the infos. So the website for Sewn is Sewn for Good, S-O-W-N for Good, right? Because the idea is we're sowing these seeds of storytelling and we're letting nature do the rest. We don't know what the fruit will be, but we know that we're putting it in good soil. And we'll water it to get it started. And then we walk back and we let the, we let the story speak for itself. So it's sewnforgood.com. And then the social is sewn for good on Instagram. And then I'm Jake Veramontes. And that's my website and also my Instagram. And that's J-A-K-E, V as in Victor, I-R-A-M-O-N-T-E-Z, Veramontes. So great. So. Our wonderful editor will, will put it below. Cool. Absolutely. Um, and you're doing all this with a one-year-old and I'm assuming a wife with yes. that one-year-old yes. too. So and there's probably a lot of um, virtual discussion going oh on God. when you're on the so road, virtual check-in. It is it is an absolute nightmare and blessing to try and be pulling this off. I mean, the one-year-old, his name is Parker. He's my best buddy in the world. And when I'm home, I'm all in, you know, it's like I'm full on dad mode, but yeah, when I'm gone, it's hard. And I, just wrote her a postcard from the from the hotel that I'm staying at just saying thank you. Thank you for supporting me and helping me get after this and go try and accomplish something big. And I could not do this without your support. And you are an incredible woman. And she has her own dreams and aspirations. And she's an author and I need to be supportive of that. And so um, she is also a hero of this story as well. 
and uh, she deserves a lot of credit for helping so, Jake, us. Jake, are this. you going to be able to like clone yourself? Do you have like many brothers? Yeah. What what's going on for like I, all the women who are <laughs> watching? I'm sure they're going to be like, wait a minute, how do I, I, I have, get this in my I life? Have a, I have a cloning device. I actually carry it with me in my bag. It's, Good. Uh, there's that Michael Keaton movie. I think it's called Duplicity or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Multiplicity. <laughs> I'm that guy. No, I. Uh, there is no clone. But what I do hope to do is I hope to transition out of being the man behind the camera and being the man on the planes and being the man with the voice. And that I get to get up in front of audiences where I could have these dialogues that we're having right now and say, this is why I do it. This is how I do it. This is what comes of it. And hopefully inspire other individuals, men and women. Oh, well, absolutely. So I mean, that's going to become... be like, I mean, just right around the corner in two seconds, yeah. the TED yeah. talk and everything yeah. else, because yeah. you have touched so many different people in so many different ways. How could it not? Yeah. And so that's the vision. So in some ways, I hope that my voice becomes a cloning device, right? The, that's the hope is that my, my mind and my mouth can generate action within other people's lives right. and that it won't look anything like me, but it'll, it'll have a similar resonance in the world. Jake, you are just really no joke. I am so glad that we were able to catch you for a few minutes today in between everything. Yes. Um, just, I think, beyond inspirational, just exciting. Because I think it can be inspired and it's a good, warm feeling. But when you're excited, it is one of like passion and action. And so I think that that really comes across. You guys, I hope you have loved watching this interview check out and look for um, the series Community Project um, and everything else that, that um, Jake has coming up because, wow, this is like a whole new level. And then I can't wait until, and I'm just going to you know put this like out into the universe, when you start um, adding maybe some different emerging tech elements to this and maybe we're going to be able to experience you know, said wow. nonprofit via AR and wow. there'll be different AI underlays with this so that the AI, I mean, the nonprofit can be able to gather wow. more data on who's watching this and why and be able to interact yes. with them. I mean, that's when it becomes, you know, a whole new level of, yes. of just, I don't know, what would we call this? Like social purpose business or something? I mean, but yeah. It's, it's just the human evolution. It's the human revolution of just being more human. Yeah, absolutely. Jake, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Lauren. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I am Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series for Filmio. This has been really, really just a blessing to bring to you guys. Spread the word about this if you can. Thank you so much for watching. We have more coming up.